Well, good afternoon everybody and welcome to the Hardy Factory. Unfortunately, this isn't the live broadcast that we'd hoped to do. We had some problems with our local internet connection, um, which made the sound um, very, very bad. We're going to film this offline, um, post it on the Facebook page. Feel free to ask your questions, just leave them in the comments section and we'll get back to you over the next couple of days with the answers. I'm Herb Cross and I'm the Hurdy brand manager and I'm joined this evening by Charlie Norris. Now Charlie's a 36 year veteran of the Hurdy business. He's currently in charge of all real production at Anik and he's also one of Hurdy's lead engineers and is responsible for the design of, of many of the flyer reels that Hurdy's developed and designed over the years. Um, so Charles, uh, you're going to take us through the manufacturing process. I believe every single reel that we, we manufacture here in Annex starts off uh, life as, as this lump of aluminium, basically. Yes, we use 6061 top grade aluminium sourced from Italy. Uh, we get it in from Italy due to the consistency from machinability and anodizing. Okay, so, so this piece you've got here now, this, this solid lump of aluminium, um, this effectively is going to make um, basically a spool. And then we need another piece to make a frame. And yeah. um, so there's two of these going to every single reel. Yes. Um, so basically, what's the first operation in getting this down to something that starts to look like a fly reel? On, on spool manufacture, there's three operations: two lathe operations and a, a milling machine operation. Okay. So it goes into this first operation machine here. It, it grips on the very edge, and there's ten tools come in: uh, rough tools, finishing tools, and, and it comes out the machine where the, the back flange and in between the flange is completely finished. So we, we basically go from this solid lump of metal down to this, which is starting to look a little bit like a fly reel. And how much of that metal is actually removed, would you say? In the final process, we take about 75% of the material from, from the ball. And then that goes away to, to be recycled That's correct. Uh, and, it, and it's used again. Okay, so when we get to this, from this stage, what do we, what do we go on to next? What's the next process in the... Okay, we'll move down to the second operation lathe machine. So, this is very similar to the first operation, except it's got a spindle that locates up the, up the tightly bored hole and a set of jaws that wrap around and grip in the recess. Once it's gripped and loaded, we shut the door and set the cycle away. There's about six tools come in, rough tools, finishing tools, and then the diamond tools come in, and it, it pairs out the front face and does the rim. So, so basically this operation takes it down from a flat face, down to this chamfered and, and more polished, yeah. uh, more polished finish, and that's done with a, with a, diamond, with a, diamond, with a diamond tool. So basically that operation there, if we zoom in a little bit, you can see it's taken us down from quite a rough finish, to something which is starting to look again a little bit more like a, like a finished product. So going on from there, um, the next process in the... We go from the turner to the billet. You'll be able to see in the machine there's a, there's a double fixture. So there's two spools going at once. One goes face up and one goes face down. The cycle claims about five and a half minutes for this operation. When it comes out of the machine, the spool is fully ventilated back and front and drilled and tapped for the handle and the latch roll. Okay, so, so basically this operation is putting all the porting into the, yes. into the spool. It's taking out a lot of the excess weight yep. and giving it that very, very sort of nice uh, aesthetic, the design of the reel effectively. Yep. Um, so I notice on the inside of, of this, now it's come out of the machine, um, it's actually quite rough quite rough on the inside, there's quite a lot of um, excess metal. I mean, maybe we can get a little close up on that. You can see inside, there's quite a lot of excess metal on the inside of the spool there that I can flake out with my finger. Yeah, well, basically that's the machining operations finished. We then got to move to the finishing department where it's loaded onto a spindle and it's deburred all four edges to a nice smooth finish. Okay, maybe we should go over and, and have a look at that process next then. So basically this is what we would call the, call the finishing department, right, effectively. Yes. Um, so this would be where this relatively roughly machined, I know you don't like me saying that because it's a it's precision machine, yeah. but it, at the minute it's in quite a rough state. Yeah, it's got machine burrs on the holes. 
Uh, George will demonstrate in a moment how to put it onto the spindle, lock it in, and then using a very fine emery pair where he's got to remove all the burrs off the four faces. So, so George again is a relative newcomer to the hardy business, I believe. G George has been with us 34 years. So 34 years, you're 36. Yeah. I'm the youngster at 16. So yeah. hopefully I've not got quite as long to go <laughs> as you guys, and maybe I'll serve my sentence a bit quicker. But so Jordy's going to um, going to show us how the how the reels are actually papered down. So we're going to bring the camera in a little bit closer so you can actually see the process. Okay, so that, that process there that George just demonstrated, effectively, it's almost like sandpaper, it's emery cloth, yes, I believe, and that's, that's he's using that to, to polish the reel down. So now you can see on this part, all of the, all of the rough edges have been removed, and we're getting to, a, to more like a finished product. So, that, so what's the next step after that, after that process? After George has done his finishing, it goes through a, a degreasing operation, a barreling operation, and then it gets anodized. Uh, we anodize 15 to 20 microns, of protection. Okay, so now, so this spool here you've got now this is a this is an anodized anodized finish. Yeah. Now I understand this particular reel that we're that's going through the shop at the minute. Um, it's quite a famous reel from Hardy's past. I'll not name it by name. It's not been launched yet, but it's coming in September. Yeah. Uh, and one of the key features of that particular reel is a, is a polished rim. A polished exposed rim. Yes. So when we when we do the anodizing, the first thing we do afterwards is remove the anodic film off the very outer rim. Okay, so we're going from the anodized finish down to this part polished yeah. rim, effectively. And in a moment, George is going to demonstrate how we hand polish the rim to a mirror finish. Okay, so this is what we're going to end up at. This is what we're we're aiming to have as the as the finished product. So again, we'll just let Geordie show you quickly how that process happens. Great, thanks, John. So, so that basically now is the is that rim taken down to a to a mirror-like finish. Now, the thing I'm really seeing here, Charles, is that there's a huge amount of handworking that that goes on in the in the assembly and the manufacture of these reels. Yes, the initial production's machine-driven, but after the first three operations, everything's hand-driven. So, it's probably fair to say there's probably as much hand work in time, or probably a lot more. There's more hand work in time when you're good, you assembly. Yeah, than machining time and all of these yeah. reels. So, the, the next step is to put the handle assembly on. Yeah, well, we're going to go to the assembly department in a moment, so we'll jump and sequence a little bit. Um, but you can see here that the drum has been assembled with the latch assembly and the handle assembly. The handle assembly is screwed in, greased, riveted. It then comes back over to this machine where it gets the top of the handle post machined off and then George polishes the end and gives it a lacquered finish. Okay, so again, it's, uh, it's all about hand work. We're taking it down from, a, from effectively quite a, rough, quite a rough finish down to a, to a finish, a cut off and polished finish. So I think we're now we're going to go into the, into the assembly area uh, yep. and take a look at some of, the, some of the hand assembly that happens on the, on the reels. Yep. So okay. after you.
So we basically know inside the, the assembly department. And, yes, and this, this really is where it all happens. So all of the parts that have been manufactured out on the factory floor ultimately all come through this room. Yes, they've got the stores, we kit them together, we come here as a kit, and then Tina starts assembling. And then everything everything gets put. This is where all the magic happens yeah. inside here. Yeah. So we're going to go over. I know, again, Pete is another newcomer to the business. Peter has been here 37 years. Right, okay, a little bit longer than you. But he's, yeah. he's weathering a little bit better than you as well. So we're going to go over and have a little look at what Pete's actually doing. Peter's going to demonstrate how to put the latch assembly onto this. So I'm guessing there's there's quite a lot of stress involved in the uh, in the assembly with all these uh, with all these kind of uh, small parts. There's a lot of stress for people filming. Yeah, so he's, he's not keen on the camera either, Peter. So yeah. it's worth noting that when when Peter started this job, um, that he did have a lot more hair, as you can see from that picture. Um, yeah, and I'm sitting next to Peter. And that's you next to him. I'm not too sure about that, mind Charles. The haircut. <laughs> it's a little bit worrying. <laughs> So when was that taken? 1983. 1983, and that was within uh, that was taken in this factory when yes, all you was, guys yeah. were still working here. Yeah. Oh. So everyone's assembled and checked. Cool. Just my latch. So that's the that's the latch assembly now that's gone on the three screw latch. Again, most of you know uh, who know about her reels will start to probably recognise what this uh, what this reel's going to be. Um, so I think we've got one more process that we're going to uh, that we're going to let people have a look at. Yeah, Peter's going to demonstrate how we burn a show back the rivets to secure them into the frame. So maybe if, you, if you've got one there, we can have a look at first, Peter, before you. Uh, there you go. Before you start. Okay, so this is uh, so this is the finished this is the finished effect. Um, have you got one though that's not been not been burnished? Okay. There we go. So you can see the difference between the two, uh, the two finishes on the rivets. So there we go. Over Thank to you. you. So really then, there's obviously many more processes involved in the manufacturing of a reel. Um, yes. And we're obviously not able to take people through everything, otherwise it would probably be a two hour tour of the yeah. factory. Um, but what you've got in your hand there is, is the finished article. It's, it's the finished assembled article, then gets inspected, wiped up, put in the case, ready for the warehouse. Fantastic. So there's a huge amount of work yeah. gone into the production of this reel within, within these four walls here in Annick. Uh, and this, this reel is going to be the newest addition into our, into our Made in England reel category. It's actually coming out uh, in September this year. Um, we'll not let slip what the name is, but those eagle-eyed viewers amongst you who are, are familiar with the Hardy range will recognise it instantly. It's a classic within the range. It's going to be available in a full range of sizes in September. Um, so really, all that's left for me to do is, is thank Charles and the guys. Thank, thank you very much, Charles. It's been a pleasure as always. Thanks for taking us around the factory. Um, again... <laughs> Apologies to everybody who tuned in for the live broadcast. Um, sadly, we did have some internet connection issues which prevented us going live and, and answering you guys' questions. Um, again, feel free to post all those questions in the comments section. Um, we'll do our best to answer them as quickly as we can. Remember, you can ask us any questions you like on Facebook, and you can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Thank you very much for your patience this evening. We did have a few problems. Hopefully this video will go somewhere to, uh, to relieving those and letting you see inside the factory. So again, thank you very much.